In the still of the night, 1977, I miss her. Walking backwards down old streets, 89th to 12th, I wasn't oblivious to danger, I was just ignored by the rapists and the muggers. I wanted their attention too much, and everybody knows violence is much more fun when uninvited. <laughs> Unless, of course, you're Helmut Newton. And then you gotta be very thin and very, very rich to afford the black patent leather vagina clothing that say yes, <laughs> mistress, and other acts of servitude that don't include cleaning houses. I wasn't thin. I wasn't rich. I cleaned houses. I was lumbering need in clothes that looked like fried batter, bumpy and thick, and a lot to go through to get to where you were going. And why didn't worse things happen to me in the middle of the night, all those nights I walked from 89th Street, the ex-boyfriend's mother, a painter, making sure I got some dinner. I never told her I was always short of bus fare. I, it was 50 cents too much more than I had in my wallet even if the 104 did go all the way to 2nd Avenue. So I walked, 88, 87, 65, 55th, 42nd, slipping past pissed off drug dealers and angry hookers, turning east from west, 5th Park, 2nd, 38th, 26th, 15th, 12th. And then, it's 40 years later, and the drugs and the hooker rank have all moved into expensive apartments for desperate rich kids who use really good stuff and men who like to buy $5,000 pussy so they can keep their black socks on. <laughs> and now, I'm told, it's safe at night. Visiting the ex-boyfriend's mother, still a painter, but now almost blind, almost deaf, I bring her Chinese food she can't afford. And I buy her paintings with checks that don't bounce. And after, I fly backwards in old streets and newfangled taxis that accept the platinum credit card I got in my wallet. My idea of love. <clears throat> Postcards from Egypt. <coughs> They are snoring in harmony again. The one with arms wrapped around me like I'm a life preserver, and the one, the butt stuck up my face, stretched out demanding I scratch his ear in my sleep. It's unreasonable to ask me to breathe outside my sea of solitude. Although there's talk from the peanut gallery, I might evolve one day to join those who love me. Evolution takes a long time, and who wants to give up home, even if it was only supposed to be temporary, or until I died. I often wonder what past lives of mine fought to make sure that this time around, love became so demanding. Still, I stay. It's not the chime of a clock or the shocking birthdays I fear, but the knowledge that once I love, I will never miss the deep silence that allowed no one in. I may never go home again. I never want to live in it anyways, but that's where the ghost pieces of all my many mothers rest, each deeply lonely in her own little world, and when I write good words, I miss them so much. No matter what they say, you only remember part of your name when you reach the promised land. Even after God killed off all the old slaves in the desert and made sure their children got born knowing only freedom, Egypt was still missed and hundreds of postcards from the pyramids stayed tucked away in sock doors and old diaries. Oh, to be lonely again. Oh, to be lost again. Oh. Thank you.